So this is our island. Take care of it. Give me a real challenge. It's still the stealing stuff. Uh, everything looks very beautiful here. You can look that everyone is even more detailed now. There are three Ruparu workers. I'll see it done. And uh, they cannot be uh, <laughs> spoken to really. But uh, we can look for someone. Here we have Himuihi and Vector. Let's let's talk to Vector. He he I seems like interesting. Another dwarf. No sign of my shipmates on the horizon. He sighs and billows the front of his shirt. Wet fabric slaps against his chest with a plopping sound. So Vector followed us here. I'm as much the supplies at the trading post. You'll come to check on me, yes? Yes. Let's check on Himuihi. I too. got it. The woman stands outside the half-finished building, arms crossed as if in protest of any shelter it might offer. She looks like she's scowling, but the scars on her face make it hard to tell. I like the new handcrafted portraits. An outsider in Tikia, Tikawara, who are you, stranger? Her hand strays toward a hide belt, kinched tightly about her waist. What does that mean? Is that is that a gesture that... Uh, that means something? Probably. I mean, <laughs> if it would be Island our Mama, we would know what that means, probably. Uh, so she's probably not looking combative, so otherwise this is this is probably a sign of something. Uh, I am Kavava Forge Dawn, Captain of Defiant. A captain? If you had sailed downwind of the island, you would have moved on, I say. I tell Ranga Ruanu that the stench of Tikiwara will drive away friend and outsider alike. Do you smell it? She flares her nostrils and grimaces. The stench of Tikiwara. You must be thankful that Berath enclosed your nose with that shell of a face. <laughs> yeah, we're looking great, aren't we? Hmm. What are you talking about? <laughs> She growls. I speak of the Lagufath. Oh my god. These guys from the White March, they have followed us here. There's no food on this barren island as those monsters do not steal. Her scars are like seams, tugging her face into a scowl. Always they suckle our village, looking for weakness. She shakes her finger, making an argument she seems to have made many times before. I push the cage with the young ones farther toward the beach, but I smell them even here. Aha, uh -huh. so they're actually making more of the Lagofrath? Ah, uh. <laughs> or is this the, the first quest? We have some rats, kill them. Um, the Lagofrath. No, we're we're feeling for these creatures. So you want them angry in addition to hungry? Anger will make them stupid and reckless, I say, more so than they are already. A week ago I tracked the fish to Hohina Ravine, so I challenged the Mataru to a hunting competition. My mother's belt for the bread mother, brood mother's head. Oh she's a hunter then, grinning, she thumbs the hide belt slung across her waist. It's not every day that newcomers land on our beaches. What, what say you show me how outsiders deal with Lagofrath? Um, uh, we don't want to kill people, but it's Lagofrath. Yeah, Lagofrath are sentient creatures, actually. They form tribes and such. And they have helped us in the White March a lot, so... Even though under the control of uh, the goddess. Well, uh, you seem strong enough to handle a few Lagofath. Ekera, what is that? You are on a term of agreement and emphasis. You are perceptive for being outside of the tribe. She nods, pursing her lips. The Ranga orders us to defend his trading post. Otherwise, I would take up my spare. This is sorry work for a Mataru. Oh, the highest class of Wana society. 
Oh, I like these explanations. Mataru shoulder the responsibility of governing the other castes and determining the practical and spiritual needs of the tribe. For a Mataru, I say, she folds her arms tighter, looking at the cobbled together building as though she'd like to kick it down. All right, I'll consider it. Keep your eyes and ears open. The brood is daring when the mother's close. She taps at the corner of one eye, leveling her gaze at you. Whatever it is your kind have, she frowns, looking a little uncertain. I'll have that fishwoman's head mounted in my hut before long. She exhales and turns her gaze away. So, what are you doing with this shipwreck? Naranga wanted a trading post. She glowers at the strange building, which appears to be part scaffolding and part shipwreck. That's that thing here. Kind of scrolled around while telling. He said it will bring more valians, like the sweaty dwarf. They will bring food and supplies and their sweaty money. A shiver of disgust ripples across her face. Um, okay, okay, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, we know what's wrong with that, but we want to we want to know why she thinks it's wrong. Or why says stand here? This is no job for the Mataru. We hunt, fight, and lead. She paces next to the trading post, restless energy practically quivering through her arms and legs. Well, you're going to be diplomats then when money arrives, not... Uh, not the direct actions anymore. So, you look you're like you're supervising. Someone must. She stops and frowns. So why aren't you hunting or fighting? Uh, it doesn't pay anymore, right? The money has come to you innocent people. What is there to hunt on this heap of rock and moss? No game, only Lagufath skulking in Ohina Ravine. And why do you not hunt the Lagufath then. Even the antelope know this is no fit home. The grasses are thin and the trees are like a child's bones, small and soft. Even to build this we must hike up the mountain for wood. And this would make Ryu sweat and she wraps the side of the trading post with her knuckles. Well, then, they would have to go to the mountain for wood, and if they take the wood away, then the mountain disappears in time through the weather, and so on. That, like, that's environmentalism here, right? Is that? Um, well, then, can I buy some supplies? Am I a Kunaru? An artisanal and merchant class of the Yuana Society. Uh, not given the equivalent praise of the Mataru. Okay, do I dirty my fingers with coins a thousand hands have touched? Never, she spits. Go see the sweaty one, the dwarf. He washes his hands sometimes. <laughs> oh, a dwarf is never washing. Who are you kidding? Um, some help for my adventures? At last, a job worthy of Mataru. Choose from the finest hunters and warriors. And we can hire here as well. But we have a group already, I think. Don't we? Let's look at our group. We have current party of five. Could we? Uh, oh, it's five out of five. Yeah, let's test these guys first. We have another rogue, a fighter, a wizard and a priest. That should be good. Should be good. We could already hire a level 5 adventurer with our money. Wouldn't be bad, probably, but... So there, the Lagufath Broodmother it is. But who else is there? Ah, oh, we're taking it slow here, actually, in our play. The focus is on looking at the game and finding more about the beauty of it and 
everything. Water is very detailed. Love it. And we have someone here. Quit your chopping. I have no fish for you. That's the Lagufar they captured. Why not? Pekeho, is he called? He looks like an orc. Full tides. The fisherman lowers his head in greeting. Oh, that's that's a fisherman's greeting then. And wipes his head's hands on his sarong, which is mottled with fish guts. He doesn't meet your gaze. Uh, why are those Lagufath caged? Himuihi and the other Mataru found them when they explored the island. In that cage or what? He looks at the creatures with mingled trepidation and disgust. They bare their teeth in response, flies buzzing around their clouded, gunky eyes and the dull patches on their scales. I'm sorry, I had to make that noise. Oh, continue. Said, maybe we train them to build. Yeah, why not? Lagfarth slaves or what? And if the soil and sea are misers here, then we eat them. He shrugs, scratching at his incurved belly. So everyone's hungry here too. Tigawara seems to be a terrible place. What else can you tell me about Tikawara? High tide is stingy with fish, and the low tide even more so. Points down the beach to a lonely wreck strung with a few scrawny fish. Farewell. So you got problems here, I get it. Pekeho. There's the craftswoman. I'll handle this. Oh, we cannot cannot buy anything from them. We need someone with a name again, I guess. Let's see where we can go. There's a Kuharu hut. Actually go over here. Oh yeah, welcome all viewers. Sorry, I I couldn't uh, I couldn't set this up earlier and uh, warn you, but I just I just had time. It's basically that I just had time, and so I I thought, hey, let's start it now. Nigati's jaws will close around you, and they these guys are arguing. What are they doing? Mukumu and Tamau. Why is why is he bound to that post? Let's ask I'll her. See it done. Confess, Tamau, or will you let good food rot? A young warrior's forehead is furrowed with lines and beaded with perspiration. Stands over a man bound to a pole. That man has probably done nothing, knowing pillars of eternity. But we'll see. Does mine look like a full belly idiot? Question the rest of the Roparu. We all hunger. Oh, that the lowest class of Wana society. Yeah, blame it on the Ruparu. That's probably a saying there. The Ruparu are designated to work as unskilled laborers and to starve in times of scarcity. Their status is a function of survival in the often unforgiving dead fire and not a moral judgment. The Ruparu are destined to be reborn into the Ku Rau or Mataru class in their next lives. Every word out of the bound man emerges as an agonized wheeze. He glares up at Mukumu. Oh, so probably he's telling him he ate something, and that is a crime in these times. That this guy ate something. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what a society. Would you like to live in that society? Disgrace. Any other Roparu has worked ten times in a day what you have in your life, and they do not complain. The warrior pulls a dagger from his belt and thumbs the tips thoughtfully. Blinking, he turns to you, wearing a bright, friendly smile. There's the disconnect. And he sees where the death got like. Yeah, that's, that's about it with a smile. His expression freezes as he takes in the carapace-like flesh encasing your head. Ekera, Ekera, you must forgive my shock. Kith do not waste it often, much less the gods. He touches his brow and nods. 
For what do you make of this hagfish, eh? Will Tamau confess if I tighten the ropes? He gestures to the bound man. Ah. Uh, I take it he's done something wrong? Pico caught this wretch stealing the last of the koiki fruit. The tribe was to feast on it for a harvest ceremony. I stole no koiki, but I wish I had. I would have hid it somewhere most unpleasant. He bears his teeth in a defiant grin. You hear this second chance we give, and Tamau throws it in our faces. Mukumu holds the blade level with Tamau's heart. So you want to kill him for some fruit? Um... Uh, what say you, Tamau? I say that I deserve what others have in plenty. Shade, a full belly, a moment to kneel on cool sands. Oh, he's a revolutionary there. Probably. He glares up at Mukumu. We stopped being a tribe when Ruanu dragged us into the path of the outsiders. Now we can only save ourselves. You shameless Tamau. To return in your next life as a coconut crab would be too kind. Mukumu stamps his foot, kicking up a flurry of dust. Hmm. So he wants justice, basically. He wants to change society. But as a member of the lowest class, uh, that is probably impossible. As a single member. Mm, he's done this before. Lied and stolen? Ekera. Of course, that does, does that mean. When we have food, he takes more than he deserves. He steals baskets and pots and even pilfered a spare head from a warrior on the hunt. Exasperated Mukumu mops his brow with the back of his hand. Why are you sweating so much? I say there is no person in Takawara who is not wronged in some way. Maybe no poison in the dead fire. Well, what was this koiki ceremony? We would have eaten the last of the koiki as a tribe. In this way, we give our thanks to Kohopa, the eel of life. His eyes go downcast. The eel of life. That sounds fishy and somehow misinterpretable. Eels Kohapa, representing the overworld and life, and Tangaloa, who represents underworld and death, devouring one another by the tail. Uh, there's something missing up there, probably. But we cannot click on it and have the full description, like you would have in Tyranny, for example. That doesn't work yet, so we're going to read what we get here. In Huana folklore, Kohopa and Tangaloa were born before time existed, and each had an insatiable appetite. They began to devour all living things, and which each, each thing devoured, they became larger. Sounds like the old snail's game. When there were no living things left to eat, and the two eels were so enormous as to encompass all existence. Oh, that's, that's the world snake of Norse mythology. They began to devour one another. Thus all beings are perpetually passing through the dis digest digestive tracts of the two eels. Nice, that is a religion. We are passing through the digestive tracts of eels. Do you believe in that too? When one reaches the end, it passes through the, next, the mouth of the next eel. The gateway to or from the underworld and the next stage of existence begins. After we pass the eel, our next stage of existence begins. I'm sorry. That sounds a little bit strange. To me, the notion of time is merely one's perception of the digestive process. So I take it eating is very important for you. The eel of life. Now this cannot happen. Our harvest fails because this one puts his empty stomach higher than the gods. Have you not learned there are no gods? Um. 
What does that mean? Did anyone think saving the seeds might be a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's good right is it traditional to eat the whole fruit seeds and all yeah we're going to come come at that but from from behind like a little bit trickier one Akira just so he nods resolutely consume the fruit seeds and all this is how we pray to Kohopa for bounty Oh my god, I thought we could now say, hey, why don't you save the seeds and... Would it make things better if I had some spare koiki fruit on hand? I say missing food is not the problem. Tamau betrays the tribe, dishonors the Roparu, denies all of us Kohopa's mercy. He winces as if ashamed to even discuss it. And our character also doesn't really believe in gods and authorities and so that's gonna be interesting that he will surely wash back into our nets as a mudfish in the next life if he does not tell us where the koiki fruit is he raises his voice again just to be certain tamau hears it so you have your guilty man what's to be done peheko's Pe pekeho's word is enough to give tamau over to the waves. Mukumu faces the beach and touches his, br his brow. Mm, I don't know. Better to drown as an innocent man than starve with you fools, Tamau spits, but without the forward momentum, just dribbles on his chin. Mukumu turns his gaze away, doing his best to ignore him. Justice does not fill our stomachs or our hearts. It brings the gods no closer to ending this famine. Some part of wisdom, at least. Mukumu's hand strays toward his stomach. He glances out to the horizon. Hmm. Oh, we got to free this poor man. Nah, we don't want a good word in your Ranga's ear. We're not like that. We don't want to please the authorities. We just want to save this man, and we get to say what we got to say for it. I owe the gods a favor. Your Koiki is as good as found. Even if we don't believe in gods, that is what would please him, right? Ekera, you would do this. I say you, our Ranga will dedicate the feast of the last Koiki. To your name, he claps you on the shoulder, leaving Tamau all but forgotten. And can you now untie this man? Until the Koiki is found, I will delight in prodding this stubborn eel for answers. Oh my god. A stubborn eel. He touches the point of his dagger, his lips spreading into a broad grin. I know who we don't like. You're free to question him in your custom, I say. And Pekeho, he tarries often by the beach. We could talk to him again. We have already met him. Mukumu nods toward the shore. Hmm. And what do you do here? In, apart from torturing people? I am a warrior like most Mataru. Can you not tell? He poses, standing tall and flipping his blade in his hand. Have little reason to fight on Tikawara, except when the fishermen drink too much of the dwarves' man's liquids. These are only small fights, not like it was on the islands we left before, when the pirates, the, the slavers. His expression goes slack. For several seconds, his widening eyes stare blankly to some remembered horror. After a moment, he snaps back. But what did I say? Ah, Tikawara does not give in abundance. But there are worse things, Ekara. I'd like to know about the village, to find out maybe where the Koiki is. Then you must speak with the Ranga. His lodge is at the top of the hill, past the trading post. Nairi also knows much, but she's quiet ever since. I know, the, the pirates probably. They did something to her probably. I don't know. His eyes go wide as he catches himself. He clears his throat. And you love her. 
don't tell don't tell me you love her because we know Nairi, she tends the shrine in the northwest part of town near the statue of Ngati yes he nods rapidly Ngati is a Yuana trickster goddess with a humanoid body the head of an anglerfish of the deep seas who is thought to lure mariners either into or out of trouble at her whim they often worship her as Ondra making the Wana the only people that believe Ondra has a physical manifestation Ondra oh my god the, that goddess from the White March Ooh, Ondra we remember Ondra we really don't like her that much Ah, but she could speak with the Lagufath. Ah, let me make a short pause here. Look at the chat and stuff. 